An aerial view of what remains of the ancient city of Jericho can be seen today in Tel Ez Sultan, also known as Tel Jericho, situated 22 kilometers northeast of the old city of Jerusalem. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. So the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat, and that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Archaeology is the study of the human past using material remains. It focuses on things archaic, hence the name archaeology. It literally involves digging up the past. Since the 19th century, archaeology has developed into a discipline that is of great value in vindicating the Bible in terms of reliable history. Dr. Nelson Gluck, as shown on the cover of Time magazine in December 1963, was an American rabbi, academic and acclaimed archaeologist. He carried out extensive pioneering work in biblical archaeology. His work over more than 40 years resulted in the discovery of 1500 ancient sites. He wrote the following in his book, Rivers in the Desert, published in 1959. Quote, it may be stated categorically that no archaeological discovery has ever controverted a biblical reference. Scores of archaeological findings have been made which confirm in clear outline or in exact detail historical statements in the Bible. And by the same token, proper evaluation of biblical descriptions has often led to amazing discoveries." Unquote. Bible critics have long challenged the historicity of the Bible. The account of the fall of Jericho is a case in point, with many relegating the Bible narrative to the realms of mythology. However, as we shall discover in this brief study, archaeological discoveries made at the site of ancient Jericho provide overwhelming evidence of the absolute accuracy of the Bible account. We read the details in the following scriptures in the book of Joshua, chapter 6. Joshua 6 verses 1 to 4 Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valour. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. Verses 4 to 5. And the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Verses 17 to 18 And the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she had the messengers that we sent. And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing least you make yourselves accursed when you take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. Verse 19 
but all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come in to the treasury of the Lord. Verse 20 So the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Verses 21 to 22 And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep and ass, with the edge of the sword. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house, and bring out thence the woman, and all that she hath, as ye swear unto her. Verses 23 to 24 And the young men that were spies went in, and brought out Rahab, and her father, and her mother, and her brethren, and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred, and left them without the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire, and all that was therein, only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and of iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. Verses 26 to 27 And Joshua adjured them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that riseth up and buildeth this city Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was noised throughout all the country. We know that the Israelites approached Jericho 40 years after the Exodus, which would place the date around 1400 BC. And we also know the time of year was at spring harvest, for we read in Joshua 5 and verse 10. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal, and kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the month at even, in the plains of Jericho. So we can now build a summary of the Bible description of the conquest and fall of Jericho. It took place straight after the Passover, around 1400 BC. The walls fell down flat. The Israelites ran up into the city. All the gold, silver, iron and brass vessels were taken away. All the inhabitants were destroyed except for Rahab, her family and possessions. The city was burned and a curse was placed on future attempts to rebuild the city. And so we turn our attention to the archaeological discoveries made at the site of ancient Jericho. Ancient archaeological sites like that discovered at Jericho are formed into a mound or tell composed of multiple layers of earth and materials, with each layer corresponding to a specific time period. The bottom layer represents the earliest period and successive upper layers represent successive later periods through to the most recent at the top. Excavation and examination of artefacts and materials found within each layer provides evidence of activities and conditions prevalent during the corresponding time period. This is an artist's impression reconstructing Jericho at the time of Joshua. We note the double wall fortification surrounding the city. Excavations at Tel Jericho have verified the extent of the original walls, as seen in this diagram. The outer defences comprised a stone retaining wall four to five metres high, surmounted by a two metre thick mud brick wall about seven metres high. Earthworks were built up rising behind the outer defences to some 14 metres above ground level upon which a second defensive wall of mud bricks was constructed at the summit, again two metres thick and rising to about seven metres. Part of the stone retaining wall can be seen in the excavations as they appear today. 
23 successive layers of civilization have been discovered through the cross-section of the Tell, with the lowest levels providing evidence of human activity well before 8000 BC. In this section through the northern part of the Tell, at a level corresponding to 1500 to 1400 BC, that is the Late Bronze Age, the remains of the stone retaining wall can be clearly seen, with a layer of mud bricks shown in red having fallen down and outward, forming a ramp structure. This diagram explains the mechanism for the formation of the fallen mud bricks forming a ramp-like structure. The earth mound upon which the city's buildings were constructed was faced by the stone retaining wall. The mud brick wall was constructed on top of the retaining wall. The Bible describes the walls falling flat, that is literally straight down. This would result in the fallen bricks forming a ramp which enabled the Israelites to go up into the city precisely as described in Joshua chapter 6 verses 5 and 20. That the walls of Jericho fell down flat as described in the Bible remains absolutely unique. No other archaeological site demonstrates this feature. God commanded the Israelites not to touch the accursed things of the Canaanites but to take all the gold, silver, iron and brass and deposit these in the treasury of the house of the Lord. Although extensive excavations at the site have been undertaken since 1867, no gold, silver, iron or brass artefacts have been discovered. Another fact that verifies the Bible account in which God instructed the people to take all of these vessels and deposit them in the treasury of the Lord. We read in Joshua chapter 6, the first part of verse 24, And they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein. A burn layer has been discovered corresponding to the destruction layer at around an estimate of 1400 BC. Further evidence of burning can be seen in this photograph. And amazingly, several vessels filled with burnt grain were discovered by Garston in the 1930s and by Catherine Kenyon in the 1950s. The discovery of the burnt grain is very significant as it indicates that the destruction took place in spring when the vessels would be full of grain, as well as verifying that the grain was not plundered by the conquerors. Facts that align perfectly with the Bible narrative. Concerning attempts to rebuild Jericho, we note a prophecy in Joshua 6 verse 26. Cursed be the man before the Lord that riseth up and buildeth this city Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. The curse on rebuilding Jericho was fulfilled around 850 BC, during the reign of the wicked king Ahab of Israel. We read in 1 Kings 16, 33-34 of Heel, one of the leaders in Israel under Ahab. And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab done more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. In his days did Heel the Bethelite build Jericho. He laid the foundation thereof in Abiram, his firstborn, and set up the gates thereof in his youngest son Segub, according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Joshua, the son of Nun. We conclude reference to the Old Testament narrative on Jericho with the extraordinary story of Rahab. We read in Joshua 6 verse 25, and Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive, and her father's house, and all that she had, and she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day. 
because she had the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Joshua chapter 2 records how Rahab hid the spies and assisted them to escape safely. We read in verse 15, Then she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. In Joshua 2 and verse 18, we read how the spies promised to save Rahab, her family and house, when they would conquer Jericho. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window, which thou didst let us down by. And thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. We read in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 31. By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believe not, when she had received the spies with peace. Amazingly, archaeologists have found evidence that one small part of the wall on the north side of Jericho did not fall during the time of Jericho's destruction. The remains are still in evidence today, and there is further evidence that a dwelling place once occupied this position on the wall. This could well be the house of Rahab, which is described in the Bible as being on the wall, and a fitting monument to the faith she demonstrated. In Wonders of the Past, published in New York in 1937, Archaeologist John Garstang, who excavated Jericho between 1930 and 1936, stated in his article, Jericho and the Bible Story, quote, In a word, in all material details and in date, the fall of Jericho took place as described in the biblical narrative. The walls fell, shaken apparently by earthquake, and the city was destroyed by fire about 1400 BC. Unquote. Biblical archaeologist Professor Tom Mayer of Shasta Graduate College in California stated the following, quote, The fall of Jericho in 1400 BC is an excellent example of textual and archaeological evidence collaborating, unquote. And, quote, Every archaeologist's report shows the walls collapse first then the city was set on fire and subsequently the city was abandoned, just like the Bible states." Unquote. He stated in further detail, quote, In the three-foot-thick burn layer, archaeologists John Garstang and later Kathleen Kenyon found room after room of ash, collapsed roof timbers and burnt large storage jars that were full of grain. This is significant because not only did Joshua command the soldiers not to raid the fallen city, but the Bible states that the Israelites invaded Canaan at harvest time. The layer of earth absent of structures which was on top of the ash layer shows that the city was abandoned for an extended period of time." Unquote. Archaeological evidence verifies the absolute accuracy of the Bible account. The Bible can be trusted as God's inspired word. God has a salvation plan to preserve those who believe and act on his word in faith, exemplified through Rahab. God keeps his promises regardless of man's disbelief and skepticism. The seven trumpets on the seventh day brought the walls of Jericho down. In the book of Revelation, seven trumpets are sounded, with the last trump bringing down this present world order and announcing the return of Jesus Christ. Where will you stand on that day? <laughs>